Hi, everybody. It's like a big party. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, I, I need a mute. Okay. It's good to see you all. <laughs> this is so weird. Uh, I'm really nervous right now. <laughs> I don't even know why. I don't get nervous for, for um, doing author visits for kids, but I'm really nervous right now for some reason. I don't know why. We can just act really immature. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? All right, so I'll wait a couple of minutes. So um, basically, all I'm going to do is just act like you guys are students, and I'm going to try to uh, picture you as like second, third graders, and I'm just going to do my whole presentation um, from start to finish. So if it's boring in some parts, I'm sorry. I'm just going to pretend like you're a class. And then at the end, if you have questions, any questions about um, how I contact schools or how much I charge or how I do orders or anything like that. You can ask me any of that stuff at the end of the, at the end. So hopefully, it usually takes me about, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes to go through my presentation. And I let the class have a few minutes at the end to ask questions. So does anybody have any questions before we start? Do you normally send stuff to the school beforehand, um, like any kind of handouts or anything like that? Anything in preparation? Um, I just usually send my link. So I, when I was visiting schools in person um, before COVID, I would, um, I had, a, I had a Google Doc with my order form on it, and I had the date and the teacher's name blank, and then I would share the Google Doc link with them so they could go in and they could um, edit that to whatever due date they wanted, whatever date I was coming, um, and then they could print that out or they could choose to email that home. But now that I'm doing virtual visits, I just um, send, I just send my link and I have, I, I, all my books are on my website now. Um, they're on Amazon too. Um, but if they want a signed copy um, personalized with a student's name, then they would go on my website and order it from there. And then um, I have a discount code for schools for 20% off that I give the teachers and the students too. So awesome. Thank you. All right. What's that? I said, awesome. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so it's going to be really weird because I'm going to act like a teacher. <laughs> I'm going to pretend that you're students. And I wish I could, I'm going to, um, let's see if I can get rid of this. And I'm recording this for all the people who couldn't be here. So um, there we go. Okay. So usually the teacher will say, um, you know, class, this is our, this is Stacy Bauer, our author, special guest. She's here to, um, to uh, meet with us. They'll do some kind of introduction and I'll just start. So, hi, my name is Stacy Bauer and I am from Minnesota and I'm a mom. I have a daughter, Cami, who is in fifth grade and I have a son, Wyatt, who is in third grade. And I'm also a teacher and I've taught everything from kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. And I'm also an author. Um, does anybody know what an author does? <laughs> Jen. <laughs> writes books? Yes, very good. So an author writes the words of the book. And I've actually been writing stories since I was about seven years old. So since I was about your age, I'm going to pin myself here and share my screen. Okay. So on your screen, um, you should be seeing some of the books I wrote when I was a kid, when I was about your age. 
Um, and so I've been reading and writing books since I was about seven years old. Um, and I decided a few years ago, I wanted to do this for real. I wanted to publish a book for, for real and become a real author. So what do you think the first thing I had to do was when I decided that I wanted to write a story? What's the first thing that you need to do when you write a book? Anybody know? <laughs> Feel free to just Hello. unmute yourself. <laughs> Hello. Title? Even before I got the title of my story, what did I have to do first when I decided I wanted to write a book? What you want Come to write up with an idea? Yes, I had to get my idea right. And since I'm a mom, and you know, a lot of um, writers write about what they know. And since I'm a mom, I decided to write about my kids, Cammie and Wyatt. So here are some pictures of my kids a few years ago. And you might notice that my daughter, Cammie, um, likes treats. And so I decided that my first book is going to be all about how my daughter, Cammie, started sneaking treats when she was three. And it started causing a whole bunch of problems. After I got my idea, what did I do next? Usually I have the kids raise their hand and I call on them, but you guys can just talk if you want to. <laughs> After you get your idea, what do you do next? Anyone? Brainstorm. So you write, yeah, you brainstorm and you write your rough draft. So I opened up my laptop and I just wrote this story and it was really easy for me because um, I, this story happened to me. So it didn't take me very long to write the story, but then I had to edit. So I actually hired um, three editors to help me edit my story and editing. And then I usually ask the kids what editing is and they usually know um, that editing, um, we look for words to take out, words to add in, um, fixing up the spelling and the punctuation and um, just making it better and, and flow. And so it takes me about a month to edit. We go back and forth, me and the editors via email, probably a, a hundred times. Um, oh, let's see here, sorry. Now I want to get that off there. Okay. As I'm editing, I'm also looking, I was also looking for an illustrator and I found Rebecca Sinclair. She's from Michigan and I asked her to draw me a kangaroo. Um, why do you think I wanted to use a kangaroo for my character instead of like, I mean, I, I, made, I brainstormed a whole list of animals. I had dogs and cats and bunnies and bears, but I chose kangaroo. Why do you think I chose kangaroo? Anybody want to guess? Because they have a pouch to hide things. Yes, <laughs> they have a pouch. Um, they can jump really high. There's not a lot of books that have kangaroos. So I chose kangaroos for those reasons. And I really liked her style. So I hired Rebecca. Here's Rebecca. Um, she lives in Michigan. So she's about eight hours from me. So I don't, I've never met her in person, but we talk um, email and on the phone. And, um, and this is where she does all of her work. So Rebecca has... Um, loved art since she was your age. She's been drawing and, and um, painting and, and doing lots of art since she was little. And she decided she wanted to be an artist when she grew up. So she actually went to art school out in California and she got her degree in children's book illustrations. And this is where she does all of her illustrating at this desk in her house. So after I hired Rebecca and I got my story edited, I had to, I created what's called a story map. And this is to kind of tell Rebecca where I wanted the illustrations and the text on the page. So you can kind of see some of the pages are blank. Some of the pages have the picture on the bottom. Some have a, um, the, the picture on the top. Some have the text on the side and so on. And then I divided up my final draft and I can't figure out how to get this Have you out been here so I can get people to come into my yes. presentation. Sorry, guys. Why can't I? Uh, oh, there's a chat here, too. <laughs> oh, oh, we're just going to put the chat over here for right now. Sorry. Um, okay, I have to stop the share because I can't figure out how to get these people in here without. Okay, now I'm going to share again. <laughs> Okay, and now I lost my things. This, this happens when you're doing your presentation too. Did I really just close out my entire thing? What the, how did that happen? It's called technology <laughs> and we're not all really good at it. And, and the kids are really sweet because they'll just sit there mm -hmm. quietly because they're on mute. <laughs> If you were doing this in an actual school, they'd start chattering and then you'd have to get their attention again. And now my thing is opening back up. Okay. Uh, let me find my thing again where I left off. 
So you do a slideshow every time you do this? Yes, this is what I use. Yep. Okay. I, use, I use this when I do um, my presentations in schools too. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't bring my computer. This is on Google. So I just, um, the, I just log into their laptop and they usually have it connected to like a smart board or some kind of a projector. Come on, seriously. Okay. Um, okay. So then Rebecca starts working on the illustrations. So she first starts out with a sketch. She kind of sketches out where um, the text is going to go and the rough draft of the illustrations. And then she emails it to me and asks me if I like it, if I want any changes. And then she adds color and again asks me if I want any changes. And then she does the actual hey, illustration. What's that? Hey, quick, quick, quick question. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Um, when you're uh, working with her, and she sends you initial illustrations. You, I saw your storyboard was really fast screen. Do you tell her what you'd like to see or you just wait to see her ideas? Well, I, I kind of started out by just mapping out like, and, and now that we've done six books together, I don't tell her anything anymore because we kind of know um, our style. She knows kind of what I want and, and I know what she's gonna do. But in the beginning, um, I'm kind of a little bit of a control freak, so I did write, I did kind of tell her. You were nice to wish. Can, what? Can somebody, can you guys mute yourself? Not be wanky anymore. Concentrate. Boom. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. My mommy, mommy made the It happens in real life too when you're not using me. I think you can force mute everybody if you go into participant. Okay, let's see. Um, I don't see it. I see invite. Oh, I think they muted themselves. Okay. Now I have to bring this back over here. So usually the teacher's in charge of that and they'll just be like, mute. Okay. Um, so the storyboard. Yes. So I would, uh, when I first started out, I would, I just told her because yeah. I wanted to my wish is I need to figure out who that is and mute them. Who's not muted? <laughs> it looks like I think it's Kathleen Barrage. Oh, there she goes. Okay, thank you. Sorry, it's just hard for me to focus when there's a lot of talking in the background. Okay, um, so I didn't. I like didn't want. Like the text on one side and the illustration on the other all the way through the book, I wanted a mix. So I just kind of told her and, and she was charging me, um, you know, for how many double spread illustrations, single spread and then spots. So I was kind of just telling her, um, you know, that I wanted the text in a certain place and I wanted a double spread here and a single spread here and spots here and all that. And she wanted that outline too. And then um, on my story, I actually broke it down and I, I still do this. I told her which words I wanted on which page because, you know, she doesn't know exactly where I want, which words out and which, which picture. And so um, I mapped that out. I map that out whenever I do um, books with her. Does that answer your question? I don't so much do that anymore. Like with the last two books I did, I didn't do a storyboard, but I still told her which pages I wanted the word, which words I wanted to go with which picture. Yeah, that totally helped. I've been very curious about that kind of process. So thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Stacy, what do you use for a program? For program to for do what? this. Yeah, to do the, the to do the spreadsheets. Oh, uh, to do this, this the storyboard yeah. right here? That in the next page, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is on a piece of paper to pencil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like I, your high tech. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I just scan it and I email it to her. Okay. <laughs> and um, and this is just on in Google Docs. I, I use Google Docs because then it's just really easy to share and she can go in and make edits too. So and but I but I print it out. And I make my notes because then I can erase and move things around and then I, and I scan it and I email it to her. So yeah, I'm very high tech. <laughs> okay. I use PowerPoint when I did mine, mm -hmm. um, but that seems easier. So, well, I don't know. And then what's this program? Is this the one that, that your illustrator uses? Um, 
This right Back. here? Yep. Well, I don't know what she uses. She just, she sent me these pictures and I just use them in my um, presentation so I can kind of show the kids her process. Nice. Looks really nice. Thanks. So then I go on and I'm going to, I talk about how um, when Rebecca makes her illustrations, just the, the, the things that she does. So she does the outline first and then she does this um, clear paint over the top and she uses colored pencils. She doesn't use colored pencils anymore. She uses her iPad, but in, when she did my first few books, she was using colored pencils and then scanning it into her computer and touching it up. And then I asked the kids, how long do you think it takes Rebecca to do one illustration? And we take guesses and talk about that a little bit. And then we talk about how um, the cover can be edited um, a thousand times too until you have the cover that you want. So as Rebecca's working on the illustrations, I was looking for a printer and I didn't know anything about how books were made. So I was excited that I got to go to the printer and watch them printing my book. So I found a printer that's just a couple hours away here in Minnesota and I drove up there and I was able to see um, how they make the books. So a printer is a huge factory that has a lot of different machines and they each have a special job when they're making a book. So the first machine prints out your book cover on this huge sheet of paper. Can you see my book cover right there in the middle? And then there's another machine that prints out the inside pages of your book. But this doesn't look very much like a book yet, does it? So there's a machine that cuts these pages apart. And then there's another machine that folds the papers in half. So now it looks more like a book, but it's falling apart. So then there's a big sewing machine. The sewing machine puts a piece of thread right here along the spine of the book. So in fact, if you look closely, you might be able to see the piece of thread right in the middle there. And then there's a machine that makes your cover and some authors use a um, hardcover and some authors use paperback. So I did hardcover, so here's my hardcover. And then there's a machine that glues your end papers onto your hardcover of your book. And then your book is all the way done. But it takes a couple months at the printer. So I had to wait very patiently for it to be done. And then I asked the kids, how long do you think it took me to get this book all the way done from start to finish with the editing and the writing and the storyboard and the illustrations and the printer? And they usually will say a week <laughs> or a month. And I tell them it took me about a year, which they think is crazy. Here's my kindergarten class I was teaching at the time. A bunch of them bought one of my books. And then I will read the story to the class. So I don't know if you guys want me to read my book and demonstrate like how I actually read it, or if you want me to skip, what do you guys want me to do? Do you want me, do you want to hear me read the story? Read yes, yes. Yes, okay. Cammy yes. Kangaroo has too many sweets. Now remember, this is a true story, but my characters are not really kangaroos. And I say that because some kids think they are really kangaroos. <laughs> my, my characters are kangaroos, but they're based on people. My daughter is not really a kangaroo. All right, Cammy Kangaroo has too many sweets. All was calm in the kangaroo house. Mommy was putting baby Wyatt down for a nap while Cammy Kangaroo was having quiet time in her room. At least she was supposed to be having quiet time. Instead, Cammy's brain was buzzing. She could not stop thinking about treats. Candy, cake, cookies, ice cream, Cammy loved them all. She knew a great place to find treats at her house, the freezer drawer. Cammy hopped down the stairs and over to the freezer, grabbed the handle and pulled it open. After placing the ice cream into her pouch, she hopped quickly to the playroom and locked the door behind her. Why do you think she locked the door? <laughs> and then I would unmute somebody and ask them why she got locked the door. Cammy kangaroo scooped out a little of the ice cream and stuck her paws into her mouth. It was the best ice cream she had ever tasted. She lost track of time as she tried more and more of that delicious ice cream. Cammy, her mommy called. <gasps> Cammy froze. The playroom door rattled and slowly opened. Mommy sighed and said, oh, come here, Cammy. We need to have a little talk. Uh-oh. Cammy, it's not okay to sneak treats, Mommy Kangaroo said. Treats have sugar and can cause cavities. You have a dentist appointment coming up. Next time you want a treat, you need to ask Mommy or Daddy first. You understand? Cammy nodded. Okay, raise your hand if you think she's all done sneaking treats and she's never going to sneak another treat ever again. There's always at least half the class that thinks she's all done because <laughs> they're so sweet and innocent. Who thinks she's going to sneak more treats? <laughs> hey, Stacey. Let's find out what happens next. That's cute. How do you handle that when you're on Zoom? Handle what? Like the raising of the hands. Can you see everybody? Yep, I can see you all right now. Can you, okay. can you guys see everybody right now or not? 
I have to scroll, but that's just, I don't have it. Oh, okay. See, I thought, because I'm sharing my screen, I can see everybody and I thought you could too. So that's interesting that you can't. So you can just see me because I'm panicked. I can see you and like three other people. And if I scroll okay. through the tab, then I can see the rest of the players. I haven't done a Zoom uh, school meeting yet. So I was just curious, like if somebody is raising their hand, how do you, I'll yeah, have to just figure that out. I can I'll see everybody. All uh, screen. Do you have two monitors? No. No, so what I'm doing is, um, and I thought you could see me, I guess, but what I'm doing is I'm, so on the top of the, um, of the um, Zoom, there's this little square that looks like it has nine little squares inside of it. And so I click that and I can see all of you. Mm -hmm. And then I move you over so I can see you okay. all and I can't see my story anymore. And when I'm done asking my questions, I click the second bar over, which looks like a, just one single rectangle. And then I'm back down to just myself again. And then I move myself over to the right. Um, and then I continue with my story. So whenever I ask a question, I click on that little grid, that little rectangle, that little square grid, and I can see everybody. And then I shrink it again down to just myself and I move it over. Okay. Thank if you, you if you watch the, I wonder if it'll do it if you watch the replay, like if you watch the recording, because it should be recording right now. So but the very next day, when mommy took Wyatt upstairs for a nap, Cammy started thinking about treats again. She quietly made her way back to the freezer drawer, but this time it wouldn't open no matter how hard she pulled. Why do you think the freezer drawer won't open? And sometimes um, the, parent, the teachers will call on the students and um, I'll let them, then the teacher will just do that and that's totally fine because they know all their names. Um, sometimes when I do Zooms, the kids' names are not on the, the screen, so I don't know who they are, so then I have the teacher call them. Sometimes their names are on there, so then I will. I mean, it just kind of, just got to be flexible with that and whatever the teacher wants to do. She hopped into the pantry searching for more goodies. The top shelf, that's where more treats were hidden. Oh, I forgot. On this page, I always ask kids, let's predict what's going to happen next. Um, raise your hand if you think she's going to try to break the lock off the freezer. And then I have some kids raise them. And then I'll say, raise your hand if you think she's just going to give up and not sneak any more treats. And who thinks she's going to look for treats somewhere else in her house? And then I'll say, let's find out what happens next. After mommy caught Cammie eating sprinkles in the playroom, she removed the lock from the playroom door and put it on the pantry door. Cammie still didn't give up. She found the cupcakes that were hidden on top of the refrigerator and licked off the frosting. Then she ate daddy's secret stash of chocolate bars that were in the drawer next to his bed and hid the wrappers behind her dresser. She even found the pan of brownies mommy hid in the microwave. Every day, Cammie found some way to sneak a treat. Soon after, it was time for her dentist appointment. Uh-oh, Cammie sat in the big dentist chair. Now this is the fir her first time ever at the dentist. She's only three years old. Show me with your fingers how many cavities you think she's going to get. And usually the kids will do this. <laughs> okay, let's find out what happens at the dentist's office. After the hygienist cleaned and flossed her teeth, the dentist came in to take a look. The dentist said to mommy, well, I'm afraid she has four cavities. Cammie, do you brush and floss your teeth every day? Cammie nodded. Have you been sneaking treats again, Mommy asked. Cammie didn't say anything. Cammie, it's very important you listen to your parents about treats. You don't get any more cavities, said the dentist. I'm going to let you choose a new toothbrush and some floss. Do you think you can stop sneaking treats? Cammie nodded and said, I'm sorry, Mommy. Mommy gave her a hug. Oops, I just went to the next page by accident. The dentist let her pick out a new toothbrush and some floss, then they headed home. When they got home and Cammie bonded quickly into the house to tell daddy about the dentist, she caught him and Wyatt on the couch with a big bowl of ice cream. Mommy laughed. I think it's safe to say this whole family has had too many sweets. It's time to change our habits. Let's start with a healthy dinner. Now, when I'm in the classroom, I will ask kids to share healthy food ideas with their neighbor and then share out to me in front of the class. But virtually, I don't ask that because it's just too much with kids being online trying to... Um, ask all the, for all those ideas. So um, that book was published in April of 2018. After that, I decided I wanted to write another book. I wanted to make a series. 
So my series title is right here, Cami Kangaroo and Wyatt Two. I had to start the writing process all over again. So I had to go back to the beginning and get my idea. So I thought and thought and thought, okay, what else have my kids done that other kids can relate to? And I thought, you know what? My daughter, Cammie, has a really messy room. Do any of you have a problem with a messy room or too much stuff sometimes? I do. So I decided I'm gonna write a book about Cammie having too much stuff. So I wrote the rough draft. I had it edited again, just like before. I did a storyboard, gave it to Rebecca. Here's Rebecca working on some of the illustrations. She's using her colored pencils. Here's a photo of my daughter in her messy room. Uh, and then I don't have time to read that story to you today, but I'll go through it really quickly. And so I go through it with the kids and I'll just kind of summarize the story. So they're eating lunch and Cammy wants to go to her cousin's birthday party. Daddy says, well, you have to clean your room first, Cammy." And she's not excited to clean her room. She doesn't like cleaning her room. She likes collecting things. And in this story, she's using her pouch to put her things in. She goes upstairs to clean her room and she keeps getting distracted. And then she realizes, oh, not only does she have to clean her room before one o'clock, but she lost her cousin's puppy. Will she be able to get her room clean and find her cousin's puppy so that she can go to her cousin's birthday party? So that book was published in 2019. Um, after that, I decided I'm going to um, do a paperback book because I had not done that before. And I like to challenge myself and try new things. So I decided, you know, kindness is something that we talk a lot about in my classroom and at my house. I really wanted to do a book all about um, encouraging kids how to be kind. So I decided to make an activity book. This book's a little bit different because it's paperback and the pictures are not colored in. So you can color them in. And there's also places where you can write and draw pictures of ways to show kindness to others. So, and then after that, I also created an activity book that has mazes and connect the dots and things like that. And that one's paperback too. And then I thought it'd be really fun to have some stuffed animals. So I found a company where if you send them your um, characters, they can make little guys that look just like your characters. So I had Cammie and Wyatt stuffed animals made. Then I started working on my third hardcover book. This is a photo of my kids doing something. So think about that in your head. What do you think the title of my next book is? Cammie and Wyatt have too much, and then they'll raise their hands and tell me. Computer like, time. Oh, yep, too much screen time. So my next book that came out is called Cammie and Wyatt have too much screen time. And so I did the whole writing process again. I had my idea, I did my rough draft, did my storyboard, here's my final copy. Um, here's Rebecca doing the illustrations. And then here's our original book cover. Um, and then I'll ask the kids to tell me what they notice the differences are. And it's interesting because they'll say, well, the one on the right's a lot brighter. So we'll talk about how, and I actually do talk about, I get, in, get into this more with the older kids, how, um, how I do marketing. So since my books are sold on Amazon and I actually have the kids guess where the books are sold. And a lot of them will say like Barnes and Noble and, and I'll tell them Amazon um, is where I sell most of my books and my website. And um, since the book cover is teeny tiny thumbnail, you really want to have a book cover that is bright and that is easy to see and easy to read. And when I had this one shrunk down to a thumbnail, it was so dark and it just looked like a big blob. So I had Rebecca change this to red. She brightened this up. She added some toys. Why do you think she put toys on a book cover about screen time? And then the Amani, said, Amani said that was all the things they could have been doing. Yes, thank you. Yeah, exactly. That's what they should be doing instead of being on their screen. They like doing all of these things, but they're stuck on their screen. Like in the story, Wyatt's friend comes over and says, hey, Wyatt, let's go outside and play soccer. It's really nice outside. We can be ninjas and build a fort. And Wyatt says, mm, I'm busy right now, maybe later. And then daddy comes up and asks Wyatt to go fishing and Wyatt loves going fishing, but Wyatt's addicted to his screen. And so he tells daddy maybe later and daddy ends up going fishing without him. So just like in, in real life, uh oh, it says my meeting will end in 10 minutes and I don't want to upgrade. <laughs> so I'm going to hurry up. Um, if the meeting cuts out, um, I don't know. Do you guys have any, should I put another link on there or something? Or what do people do when their meeting runs out? I think we can just all log right back in on the same link. Oh, 
Okay. We'll That's how that. I do it. Okay. Sounds good. We'll try that. Hopefully we can. Um, if, we, if we can't, um, I'll, I don't know. I'll figure something out. Okay. Um, let's see. So then we talk about, you know, the book or whatever. So let's go to the next thing. Here's Rebecca working on that. I'm going to kind of zoom through the rest of this here. Um, with the older kids, I do talk about how I did Kickstarter campaign and I tell, I talk to them about how I did that to raise money. I have them guess how much it cost me to make a book. They usually guess like $500. I tell them it's 8,000 and they can't believe it. So then I tell them I had to raise money because I didn't have it. Um, so I talk about that with the older kids. Um, and as an author, I don't just write books. My daughter and I sign a lot of books. Um, I do a book launch party every time I have a book come out. Um, I go on TV with my daughter and talk about the books. I go to a lot of local stores and try to sell the book. And I tell the kids, you know, um, that at the shops, a lot of people tell me no. And I don't just go home and say, all right, I'm done. I can't do this. Nobody likes my book. I just keep going. And I found, you know, over 30 stores in my area that sell my book now. And you just have to keep going and keep trying and you'll find people that, um, that you know, want to sell your things. And I do, a, I have done a lot of school visits in person and virtually and book signings at local bookstores. Um, and then I tell the kids about how I wrote this book last August. And we talk a little bit about that. And and then we talk about um, in my new book, which just came out. And I do talk about the Christmas book. Um, unless the teacher tells me ahead of time not to, I did have one school tell me, I have a lot of kids who don't celebrate Christmas. We don't want you to even show it. And I was like, okay, otherwise other, other schools haven't cared that I mentioned it. And then I show them this, and then I will ask them if they have any questions. And that takes me to the end. That's 30 minutes right there all the way through. And like I said, with the older kids, um, I talk about um, how I sell the books and how I market and how they're, I, I, even, I have even talked about um, print on demand versus um, selling the hardcover books and all that. And they're, they're really um, interested and pretty smart about asking questions. So anywho, I'm going to see if any of you have any questions. So if you just want to um, unmute yourself and ask, or I don't know if there's a better way to do it, but you can just ask. Hi, Stacy. I put a couple in the chat box. Oh, okay. That's a great idea. I will check there. Yeah, just do that. That'll be yes. <laughs> I that would be a lot better. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to see if I can see everybody. This is so fun. It's really fun seeing you guys in person because, you know, we talk a lot in the group, but it's fun, like, seeing everybody's faces and and um, and hearing your voices. So I'm really glad you guys could make it. Okay, uh, let's see here. I'd like to know what they seem to want from you the most. Educational info, actual storybook info, English, right? Okay. So Karen's question was, um, what do the schools want from me the most? So what I, when I send, so people, one of the questions is probably going to be, how do I contact schools? So last year, what I did was I had spent like an entire day when my kids were at school, because this was in 2019. So when my kids were at school, I spent the whole day looking up all the schools in the Twin Cities area, in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. And I, I um, copy and pasted all of the uh, media specialists and the principal's emails into a notes document on my computer. And it took me forever, but then I was able to use that again this year and just copy and paste. And it was really easy because I already had all the information. And I just sent them all an email and it just, I sent it in August and I sent it again in January. I just sent it last week for I Love to Read Month in February and for the rest of the year. So I send it twice. So I sent the email I send is really informal. It just says, hi, my name is Stacy um, Bauer. I'm a local author from the Twin Cities area. And I'm, I'm also a teacher and I would love to do an author visit. I have this book series. It's about, um, you know, family and friendship and kindness and um, honesty and patience and all those types of values. And, um, you know, I would love to uh, present to your students about being how, how I became a published author and um, read a story and answer questions. And I have um, pictures from my illustrator and the printer and, and pretty and I tell them like I'm really flexible whatever they want me to cover like uh, last year I went to a school this was the most nervous I have ever been I almost threw up I was so nervous but I went to this school and I had to do <laughs> I did a presentation to the entire gym it was like 500 kids it was 20 minutes and I was supposed to inspire them to read for I love to read month and that's all they said and I was like <sighs> okay <laughs> I was like, and I, I love reading, obviously, and I love writing, but it was, 
it was different than anything I had done. So I just reworked my slideshow and put a whole bunch of stuff in there about how, about the books read when I was a kid and how books have inspired me to become a writer and books, you know, take me away to a different world and all this other, I don't remember what I said. Cause when it was over, I was just like, did that just happen? Cause I just, so, <laughs> you know, but when I, that was very, um, very, uh, I was very nervous during that. But so in my email, I just tell them, you know, I can do whole school presentations. I can do classroom presentations. I can do grade level. I can do literacy nights, whatever you want me to do. And I tell them, this is what I usually do. Um, but if you want me to do something else, I will. And so I'm, I'm very flexible when it comes to that. Um, the so the ages I do um, start with, I've done, <laughs> I went to a daycare once that had uh, babies <laughs> all the way up to three-year-olds. And for them, I just read. <laughs> and even then, like I had to pretty much summarize when I was reading this book to them, I <laughs> basically just showed the picture and said, the kangaroo family was having lunch. Cammy had to go clean up her room. So she went upstairs and oh, she lost her cousin's puppy. Where do you think it is? Is it in the shelves? And then they would say, no. Do you think it's in the closet? And so I really simplified it when it came to, obviously the babies didn't even care, but I mean like the toddlers have about a five minute attention span. So to bring them in and they were sitting like in my lap, like I was on the floor, they were here and I was just, each book was like two minutes, you know? So, um, but it was just fun. I mean, it was still super fun. And then um, preschool, I talk a little bit about being an author, mostly reading. Um, kindergarten, first, second, third is what I just showed you. And then like fourth, and I've done middle school before, and they still want me to read to them. I, I never think they do. And they always, they're like, yeah, read to us, read to us. So I, I still do. I read in my book and they love it. And they ask, um, they ask questions about marketing and publishing. And it's, it's really fun talking to the older kids too. Okay. Um, let's see here. So um, I'm feeling a lot of pressure right now because I'm down to two minutes. So I'm getting a little bit nervous. Okay. Um, so challenges sharing my screen. Yeah. So Zoom is super, Zoom is my favorite platform. It's really easy. Um, my district that I teach in in Okahennepin uses Google Meet and that one is okay. But like with Zoom, it's all on one um, window with with Google Meet, you have to open like two different tabs. And so I have to have myself like on half of my, and if I had two monitors, you know, I could have myself over here and them over here, but I don't. So I just have myself shrunk down here. And then I have my other thing over here and I share, and then I have to go, then I have to like unshare and go back here and look at the kids and then share again. So it's a big, it's a pain, but it's doable. Um, and then I've used WebEx and that was fine too. I mean, they all work. It's just that Zoom is, Zoom is definitely the, um, I hope I don't lose all these questions after this thing, uh, after this thing um, expires here. <laughs> okay, maybe I should copy the questions really quick. I'm just gonna copy these really quick and paste them into my notes. And then you guys, when this runs out, just go back into the same thing. And if you can't get in there, um, Maybe just, I'll just make a post in the Facebook group of a new link and just try to go into the new link. Okay. Just try to look like right away to look for my name and I'll do that. Okay. So do I give teachers? Okay. Let's see. Sorry. I want to go back to where I was here. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. How much do I charge? Sure. Josh asked me that question. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so when I, that's a, it's, it's hard. Okay. Because like, do you want to get a lot of visits? If you do do them for free and you might sell some books or do you want to make money? If you do, then you should charge, but you can't charge too much or nobody's going to book you. So I did a lot of research when I first started out. I, um, there's a group on Facebook called creating, um, engaging school visits, and you can look up, you can join that group and there's a lot of good advice in there.